Hi guys, I'm Dr. Yas Dani from Seaside Medical Technologies. I'm Aidan. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Today we're going to talk about our uh, Seaside Discovery, which is a portal where you can access um, information regarding skin healing, trauma, everything skin related, and um, how to better take care of your skin, especially after any kind of trauma or before any kind of procedures. And we talk a lot about um, uh, skin health and, and the kind of ingredients that, that we look for in, a, in a, what we call a clean beauty or non-toxic beauty product. And I think it's really important that, um, that consumers and, and our clients are aware of different kinds of chemicals that are in so many different, you know, cosmetics, things you put on your hair, skin, nails, body. Yeah, I mean, it's a great resource to just know about all products. This is not just about our products. About, it's about helping everyone make informed decisions on when they're looking at their products, when to use their products, when to throw out their products. You know, patients coming in with, like, irritation in their eyes, redness around their eyes, and they think they have some kind of a scary autoimmune disease because it's not going away. And when we talk further about it, we find that, yeah, you know, maybe they're allergic to a particular fragrance or dye that's in a mascara or eye. Which is actually so common. Which is very common. Yeah. Or they keep it around for... And it's too long, which is also another common problem. Mm -hmm. But there's usually simple solutions, but there's not a clear way to get that information out there. So this portal with these blog posts and articles coming out. So, you know, we're, we're, uh, we've uh, coordinated with uh, a PhD in, out of Mexico, actually. She's really smart. Oh, awesome. She does a lot of our research and helps us with, with the articles so that we can just ra raise awareness. That's awesome. Um, and that, that's the main reason why we created the products to begin with, because there's no solution that I could safely put on my patient's skin after or before a procedure that didn't have like all of these toxic ingredients in there. I mean, I felt bad for using it, but really we don't have access. Do yeah. you find that it's a problem trying to 100%. find... 100%. No, exactly. 100% I think it's a problem. And I think it's confusing that this information is really only taught to doctors, but everybody's using these products. Why aren't we all? Why don't we all have this knowledge and access to understanding what we're actually putting on our skin or what we're doing to our bodies? It's not really just medical professionals that should know this information. Yeah, absolutely. Well, medical professionals don't even know. Unfortunately. <laughs> well, I think, you know, in America, we're even behind. You know, European really? counterparts, yeah, Canadian counterparts. We don't eliminate a lot of the, the, the same ingredients and toxic chemicals that, like, European societies Interesting, yeah. have eliminated from, from common use. Like, in the order of thousands of And chemicals. that's not just for uh, products. That's in, in terms of different needs and things like that that they allow... Yeah, that's that we true. allow into Even our food. country that they don't allow into yeah. their country, like yeah. different chemicals and hormones that we're feeding to cows and things like that, that people in America are ingesting that is maybe affecting their skin. Well, absolutely. I think, you know, and one of the one of our articles actually is uh, featured around vegan food. Really? Yeah, vegan diet. And I'm how, vegetarian myself. That's right, I yeah. know, yeah. Are you vegan? I try to keep vegan, but honestly, it is really hard. What do you find that it, which one? Um, what's your cutting downside? Out, cutting out eggs. Is, eggs? Is really oh, yeah, that's true. Because yeah, yeah, it's a good yeah. source of protein, and yeah, yeah. I try to do eat, you eat, eat enough egg? protein. I do. Good. Yeah. I no, do. that's the way you oh, should. Okay. Yeah, so why are people why are people so focused on just having that? The whites. Part? Yeah, because they're misinformed. Yeah, exactly. It's just total pure misinformation. They're trying to get rid of the cholesterol from the yolk, okay? But then but what are we missing out on? All of the nutrition is in the yolk. So all of the, the iron and the and the vitamins and the carotenoids yeah, and everything is in the yolk. Yeah. Okay. If you're eating five eggs a day <laughs> then maybe you should take two yolks out, you know? Don't, don't put, you know, if you're eating it for protein like athletes, yeah. they will load up on the protein with the eggs, but if you're eating like three to five eggs a, every day, I probably would take a little bit of the yolk out, you know, just put five egg whites and three of the yolks, something like that, to just reduce the burden, because it will add up. 
Your cholesterol will go up. Good Sorry. evening, morning, Hello. afternoon. <laughs> it's afternoon, right? Yeah, okay, we're like, good. did you get your coffee from Colombia? <laughs> yeah, I, was, I just got back from Bogota. They wouldn't let me back in the States. <laughs> um, so the, the, the whole point about ve veganism and vegetarian diet is to reduce the burden of it, inflammation, essentially, within the body that then translates to the skin. Yeah, and is that due to the meat itself? Or is that due to hormones that are added? or? What is that? Well, um, you know, I think the the protein itself is difficult to digest. Yeah. You need a lot of cellular processes. I mean, it is. It's hard to on be your able body. to digest it. That's why you know people experience more heartburn when they eat meats and chicken. Um, they might feel like a, a bloating sensation because their their intestines are really working hard to break all of that down. And I think, yeah, some of those end products, those byproducts, are not digestible. So yeah. what they do, they just kind of roam around the blood, they hang around the tissues, and they cause oxidative damage, and they cause, you know, little triggers and inflammation. Um, so, so what do you recommend? Do you recommend everybody to cut it out, or to yeah, lower I'm it in their body? Like, or? exactly how I said about elimination. Like, you know, I don't believe that we can eliminate every single chemical that's coming into our products. Oh, totally agree. Yeah, and I, and I don't think that's a very um, efficient use of your time or money. Because it can be very expensive it to be, go to shop at a, at a particular... Like Credo Beauty will be the only place, you know, in all of Los Angeles that you can shop for a wide variety of cosmetics. And then it's wildly expensive. And, and not everybody has expensive. the access and not everybody has the no. financial ability. Yeah. So reduce the burden, you know, don't eliminate completely, but just, you know, ha be conscientious about what you're choosing and how you lower your dosage lower your yeah yes. yeah because if we find in many studies too that that these chemicals whatever you know thousands of chemicals that we are ingesting and putting on our bodies all day long they actually do show up in the urine and when you eliminate those chemicals from the from your environment the urine also the amount the concentration goes down so you there's know? stuff in your body so there that's is showing stuff. exactly yeah. what's inside exactly. your body. Exactly. So why not just you know be able to give your body the chance to heal and recuperate? Because the body is a very, very complex and well-designed you know, machinery that can heal itself. But if you just load it up with so many toxic chemicals, one day it's gonna it's gonna give out. One one little avenue might not you know, might not heal, and then you start to see disease. You might see skin irritation, redness, eczema, psoriasis. Um, so there are a lot of different flag words that kind of set people off and they're nervous about. They see alcohol, acids, things like that, uh, fragrance. They trigger people to be wary of certain products. First of all, very few products these days will write fragrance as one of their ingredients. Interesting. Yeah. So what they do is they'll take the chemical structure of whatever the fragrance is and will they, they'll put that and a lot of people don't even understand what these words are. I don't know a lot of the words, you know, I mean and yeah. I study this. Benzyl alcohol, that's a fragrance type of alcohol. Mm. So you may not think of it as a bad thing, but it is. You know, it's not really something you want to have in your cosmetics, it's drying. Fatty alcohols on the other hand, or gentle preservative type alcohols like sterile or cetyl or phenoxyethanol um, these kinds of alcohols are actually smoothing and they help to emulsify the agents really yeah so That's that it actually is nice on the skin and there really has not been they haven't been linked to any irritation as a matter of fact uh, honest beauty which is a company based in santa monica yeah. as well um, uh, they have used this, these types of alcohols in their, in their line and they're you know, all about you know, clean and natural uh, skin care. So what do you say to people that say, I don't want preservatives in my products? No such thing exists essentially. Yeah, no manufacturer of any skin care product in the world is going to bottle 
a whole bunch of botanicals, active stuff. I mean, we have red algae extract in here. You know, that's a living organism. It will not. Yeah. It won't. It will keep for maybe a couple of months. So you can't have it on the shelves for that long. And you really don't want to risk having microbial content yeah. in your product. And you're applying bacteria onto your skin that could then cause inflammation. Yeah, that's like, yeah, you're going to have issues with, with consumers using these products. So what we use instead are things like those types of alcohols that are preservative alcohols or we'll use um, derivatives of like cloves or beets or oranges that are manufactured in a facility. There are degrees of irritation we find that with all of these ingredients and we're getting, we're refining that processing, you know, researchers and scientists are hard at work trying to figure out what is the, the least irritating and best natural preservative we can provide. And the more people like you and like, you know, our patients, me, everyone, the more products that are like this and within this realm that we use, the more demand it will carry in the marketplace. Therefore, manufacturers of let's say L'Oreal you know or yeah. Revlon it's that carry company. yeah From millions of different of, products. yeah let them start hearing the signals and seeing that the demand for in the market is changing to more natural products yeah because we don't want to be falling behind the Europeans Absolutely. that much you know distance that they're 10 20 years ahead of us and their products are so much more, you know, tolerable and safe. And we're still struggling. You have to invest the time into it.